Hello there everyone and welcome back to the mod that features the Iberian Union in some cases with a green French state. Do you know? But we got to talk about the issue of autonomous communities. Passing the new programs for autonomous communities was easy. There's no surprise of course, they had a majority and so then the programs failing would be more of a surprise than their success of course. Those who were against a new or perhaps a renewed old autonomy was, were a talkative lot. The Franco was at a talent for never shutting up, especially when the military buddies were in earshot. But they were definitely in earshot this time, as Adolfo Suarez was forced to discover when he was strong-armed to meeting a representative officer. What the heck were you thinking? The sergeant screamed at him with a fury Suarez had never seen before, even without even with, without even what I was sent here for. I want to know what the crap you were thinking. Do you want to kill this uh, country? Adolfo, despite how he tried to keep a reasonable, respectable face, was close to wavering into the pressure's place on him. We're the ones killing the country, trying to keep a hold of the entire thing like it all takes a paperclip. Don't be mad. They went on for a while more in a pointless back and forth before the officers finally gave up. We're never going to see eye to eye, so there's no point in continuing. We'll remember this. I'm sure you will. But we're meeting with the regional leaders because <laughs> why not? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I don't remember if I read this one or not, but though popular unrest is the most visible kind of recognition, it rarely erupts spontaneously. There are a number of regional leaders who are usually responsible for the various protests, strikes, and riots that crop up from time to time. Though they've always possessed a fair degree of plausible deniability, their names and involvement is an open secret these days, given the current unrest. They clearly remain unconvinced by our campaign promises. The best course of action would be to meet each of them privately, and so that we maybe clearly elucidate our plans and get them uh, get them on side, of course. And we do have a cup of coffee here. Not, oh, cup of tea, not coffee. Double chai spice. Black tea, something like that? Revive regional trading. The end of the trade overt alliance not only severely damaged political ties between the nations situated situation on the Mediterranean Sea, but also diminished regional trade ties. Initially, it has been deemed that this would be a necessary sacrifice to endure as the ramifications of spying and unwanted foreign influence trumped the terrible financial and economic consequences in terms of national importance. With time, this view, however, became associated with those unwilling to accept that a healthy economy was a key building stone in securing national security. With the northern hegemon regaining its vitality, we cannot allow the southern nations to again just become simple chess pieces in a game outside of their control. Iberia must reopen trade with other mad nations again. No matter how great the betrayal had been, national security comes first, meeting with the regional leaders. So, if you're ready, we can begin. Would you like a cigarette? Someone let the pack here. <coughs> I don't smoke, so the second figure said. Fine then, Francisco Baselmo said, an exceptionally old but kindly faced man, so I've been told you don't support a government. Can't blame me, but I would like to understand that your support is very important to gain the support we need. So, the reason you're here is that I would like to talk to you, you to talk to me. Tell me everything you want done, all your demands, and which are the most important. The originalist was incredulous. So you'll comply with the list of demands if I vouch for you? Why else are we here? Our transcriber will note down everything you say, and then we'll go over it. Each local leader was a few days after the other. Francisco was handling it himself, and he knew what to do. He let do one, sing the praise of the government, pass some legislation, and then face a more trusting leader. At least they seemed more receptive. When it came time for his side of the idea, he provided. Nothing was intolerable to the military of the party, and simple concessions won many allies. It is easier to make friends with enemies than to destroy them. Nice. Well, looks like it's hit us. Credit rating has been degraded. But, 130, we are barely, barely below that. And you're really supposed to not looking good. Jesus Christ, it's so bad. But growth is going up. The debt interest went up more. Um, so hopefully we continue to grow the economy more, 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 more. So that really sucks. Oh, God, is this still going down? Oh, my God, that sucks. Jesus. I chipped Rome. The Italians were the leaders of the old triumvirate, no matter how you spin it. That being said, they weren't the worst of leaders. We had been left alone in Europe without them, and for that we were in their debt. Even then, they weren't the worst people in the world, and with some proper communication, we became better relations with them, surely. Probably, right? Oh, man. I mean, recovering from the crisis. Oh, good. The most recent numbers are here, and it seems like that we are recovering from about as well for the oil crisis as we expected from the start. It's been steady, but not really fast or slow. It's just okay. It'll be a bit more time until the worst is behind us. Not good, not bad. Oh, we're still at war, though. This is very weird. It's an oil crisis. Still doesn't look very good for us. Nothing really changed. Slowly going down. Yeah, the surplus is a little, little better. Even though we deleted the army last time, but whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm eating an Ancada. The Turks are an interesting bunch, to say the least, further away from us from the Italians. They too had to deal with the drying out trade in the Mediterranean. While we're not sure that it's safe enough to send one of our leaders to Turkey to conduct diplomacy with them, we can't just ignore them. They were a crucial part of the Triumvirate and remain a strong player in the Med, which we cannot ignore, American military advisors. I think I read this earlier, but I'm going to read it again, why not? Given the improvement in diplomatic relations between the OFN and the Great Union, we're finally able to share knowledge of further advancements in all sorts of different matters of state. After all, we're good friends who do not share. Despite our army being a force of the reckoned with, at least in the eyes of some, Fellow if you want, what the heck? It can always use a keen, knowledgeable foreign eye to point out for the areas of improvement since, imperfect, since perfection is not a concept rooted in reality. 
The experience Americans have in recent conflicts could be a great help in modernizing our army further. Whether we then follow their points of advice is another question entirely. Happy February, everybody. 0.94. Doesn't even go down by billion, will it? No, I do. No, not really by billion, but you know, it's close ish. It's not close enough. <coughs> well, not as much growth as last time, but it's still going down. We're still working on it. Inflation went up a little more, but whatever. Invest in Latin America. Sure, why not? A bear in the hatchet. Our visit to Rome has proven quite fruitful. The democratically elected Italian government seems open to the establishment of closer ties, and the Italian public has begun to see Iberia as a worthwhile part ever since the strengthening of the Iberian Council. If the king himself has spoken favorably about Iberia and welcomes the possibility of increased diplomatic ties, it appears that the hatch has been buried. And Iberia and Italy shall be free to forge a lasting partnership unhindered by the baggage of the triumvirate and our dysfunctional pa political past. Partners once more. But we're going to invest in Latin America, too. Latin South America, once. The combined jewel of Iberian imperial conquest and colonization now firmly under the thumb of freedom. That's a great target to invest into as a former colonial master. It's our duty to help these young nations thrive despite our fraught past. It also helps show the OFN that our intentions in approaching them are pure and for the good of both actors involved. And the future of our investments uh, it may even return a good flow of dividends helping the economy in turn as well. I, I tell the Iberian non aggression pact. Now that the destiny of our nation has been more clearly defined, we've begun overtures towards the other powers of the world. And our social realities, we've begun to most likely closely align with our old ally in the triumvirate, Italy. To that end today, we christen a non-aggression pact. While not a declaration of formal alliance, it serves as a symbolic gesture of goodwill between nations. The ramifications of this action, as well as international reactions, are yet to be seen. For now, however, we can take pride in establishing a diplomatic presence for Iberia. A return to form, of course. Nine days left, as the game is going to lag, to autosave as we take a sip of our tea here. To keep us nice and refreshed. What are you drinking right now? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I almost, almost always have coffee in the morning. Almost always. Not always, but almost always. And we've got three days left. They unlock decisions to reform the Iberian army using American advice. Sounds like a good idea to us. Hey, that's slightly better. Growth got worse. And debt to GDP ratio is slowly. Well, got slowly improving. But at the same time, uh, the only reason we have a surplus is because we're at war and we're doing temp tax hikes. So it really sucks. American advisors have arrived to assist our military. You know what? We can do that too, but we'll see. Now that they are here, the question is how to best involve them with the military. They'll see fit in any role we place them in, but there is still certainty, uncertainty to the degree which will be integrated with the military. We could place them in the general staff, which, given the loyalty to us, could be helpful as well as a larger benefit that they could provide to our military. If we give them as separate advisors, it'll be less controversial. The population of Iberia is rather divided on the move, so we'll need to make a decision with the opinions of the public of mind. I bet them in the military leadership, we keep them separate. Keep them separate. Special air training? Well, I got the uh, uh, well political popular list. Sure, sure, sure. Why not? <coughs> that property's still slowly getting better. That's not America. Visit Washington. Considered our shared common heritage with Americans and our current standing in Europe, it's been decided to draw closer to the U America and its allies in the OFM. In order to do this, we'll have to show our, them our willingness to open new diplomatic channels and capacity to trust. Therefore, a number of senior civil servants for the foreign office will be sent as envoys to Washington, of course. Shared military designs, eventually. We all would all benefit from exchanging military designs with each other. We all have to fight in different conditions, so we have different equipment to specialize for each situation. Outside of these situations, however, we stand unprepared for our enemies. I've had issues developing military equipment for a while. Now we would benefit from Italian and Turkish designs. This isn't to say that they are better than us by any means, but having more ideas would surely be of great value, and of course, they would be able to learn from us as well. Ah. That's in Cuba. Increase the foreign investment cost by a little bit more. We're 950 days, oh my god. More growth. Increase. The death of Picasso. Carolina, though many, like the many that morning, heard the news break on the radio. Pablo Picasso died the night before, age 91. Heart failure while hosting friends for dinner at his home in Sarria. Sarria, on the outskirts of Barcelona. Just like that, one of the most influential artists of the 20th century would never paint again, the trying and failing to think through the shock Carolina. Acting on an impulse, she finished her coffee, grabbed her bag, and left home. On the streets of Barcelona, it seemed like a normal spring day. The sun peeking into the tight cobblestone streets of the Gothic Quarter. Fighting her way through the alleys, Carolina found the gates of the Picasso Museum already surrounded with flowers, candles, and a small crowd. She quickly 
<coughs> brought her own candle from a passing vendor and laid it down. As the hours passed, the crowd would swell and spill all over the museum and the streets around it. Grand wreaths and floral arrangements would be set up, lone musicians and eventually bands would play, speeches were given. Visuals of the store, big and small, sprung from Madrid, Picasso's birthplace of Malaga, and Porto and Lisbon all, all across the world. Barabira, had, he had not been only been a great artist, but his return marked a milestone in the transition to democracy, as it confirmed that it was not just an imagination that things were getting better. Carolina stayed in the vigil, which seemed more of a celebration of life than a morning of death, through to the afternoon and into the evening. Condolences to the family. Our trip to Anatolia. Our meeting with the Turks now have been particularly conclusive. Well, our, with our diplomats, we were given plenty of opportunities to take in the sides of Istanbul and Ankara when it came to actual negotiations, though. The Turks were less forthcoming. Their diplomats were stone faced, refusing to give us even the slightest hint of what they were leaning. At the time, our inquiries were met with non committal or evasive answers. It remains to be seen whether Ankara commits anything that's substantial. Here's to hoping, at least. Maybe, they, maybe they'll agree, maybe they won't, you know. We'll see. But this is insane. Over th two years, increased liquid reserves, decreased our foreign investment costs, increased uh, their growth through per by 3%, and our growth increased by 2%. I just don't know how fast we can get there, because that growth, all that would be really nice. So, Turco, a bear, and an aggression pact. Now the destiny of our nation has been more or less defined, we have begun overture towards the other powers of the world. And our social allies, we have begun as most closely aligned with the old ally in the triumvirate, Turkey. To that end, though, of course, we christened a non aggression pact. When that declaration of formal alliance serves as a symbolic gesture for goodwill between nations, the ramifications of this action, as well as international reactions, uh, have been uh, relatively mixed. Eh, I don't know what it is, says. But as internationals have been. Uh, are yet to be seen, though. For now, we can take pride in establishing diplomatic presence in Iberia. Well, they're very strengthened, but at this point, it doesn't really matter. That's not as good as it used to be. This debt, but the interest went down ever so slightly, but growth went down, too. Hmm. Yeah. Even if we did that, it would mean like nothing. <coughs> you know. Like it's 0.24. It's not very much at all. Oh look at that. No more to fool. Did they actually do it? They did it. Roz How did Rozhevsky win against Boris Yeltsin? What the heck? He's got a fiscal crisis, kind of like us. Oh, no, he just changed his... Look at that, he just changed. He's got a nice mustache. I love that picture. That looks really good. He won with a fiscal crisis. Okay, then. Well, whatever. Proposed free movement. We should request free movement between the nations of the extra Umber. The benefits that would entail that far out the negative, such as allowing for easy access to trade across borders and as such reducing any tariffs that we may have been imposing on each other's goods. Likewise, it would reduce the border tension by allowing people to travel wherever they want within the triumvirate, some of that Italy and Turkey are likely to receive well. American delegation visits Madrid. Torquato Fernandez Miranda's excitement at the prospect of much anticipated OFN delegation arriving in Madrid today was openly palpable or palpable to all of his senior advisors and civil servants who or he ordered to make the final preparations for his welcome guests. Their arrival should be marked as a historic event. He had been unsure whether the Americans and their allies would pursue the great risk directly associated with the visiting Iberia after he had sent a successful diplomatic mission recently to Washington. The positive news had opened entirely new pathways for his two peoples to find their position on the world stage amongst the competing world powers. Finally, there might be the open op or option of directly being involved in the future of a ravaged Europe and the struggles of the struggling globe in general. Not just being eternal watchers or low-level influencers as a secondary power and a doomed anti-German alliance, hope was the primary motion of many Spanish and Portuguese as impressive American plane landed in Madrid. And this was reflected for the duration of their stay and during the lengthy discussions held at the Madrid Bar Palace Hotel in a busy, bustling capital. Come back whatever you want. A deal with the Cadenians? Attracting industrial investors. The USA and its numerous allies may have suffered financially 20 years ago, cause, which caused long-term structural damage to the tottering economy. Uh, but they did not have to... The Americans' allies, of course. Uh, had to follow the German whims in a certain room during the last decade like we did, rather than they were able to use the peaceful years to build up an industrial base. We can only enviously admire from afar. With us drawing closer to the open, this may change, however. We can use our improved relations to try to advertise our economy to the investors of the free world. Sure. Why not? <coughs> Next stuff. The sort of federal, federal army makes it very bad for us. Oh, it's not bad. At least it got better. It's got ever so slightly better, too. But we're working on it. We're working on it. Swedes and Biscay. There are a few places in Iberia to better spend a summer afternoon than a pa Playa Ariatera. The once quiet beach, six miles north of Belbao, has become something of a tourist attraction in recent years. Traveling there requires no special planning, but nonetheless carries a certain aura of adventure. The Carlson family have been quite anxious to travel there, temperate enough that the summer sun was not too painful and the risk of sunburn low, but still warm enough that swimming was enjoyable. Surfing, too, if only they could figure out how to say bouncing aboard. 
But it'd be foolish to swim amidst the Atlantic waves after a sunset with nobody to see or hear you if you report in the deep, and so after as many hours I left the Carlson satisfied and sore. It was time to return to the hotel. Yeah, the hotel, where was it again? It was a countless hotels in Soplana. None particularly distinctive, but Johan was beginning to regret picking an inexpensive hotel farther from the beach. Wandering on the streets, the Carlsons became more concerned as the sky turned ever darker. Finally, they caved in and it was time to get some help. Hotel? Hotel? Johan asked to have someone he presumed was a local. Si, qua hotel? Johan tried to remember the name or what the hotel looked like in his best Spanish choked out. Hotel a uh, Blanca. Blanca Hotel of uh, Farmacci. Uh, Blanca Hotel of Farmacci uh, de Grande Cala, Sabor 2? Hearing Spanish was bad, bad was a bit frustrating, but Fernando had gotten more used to it with time. When Hotel Blanco ser de la Farmacia? Uh, si Lama Casa de San Isabel. Si, muchas gracias. Johan was relieved he could spend his night in a comfortable bed. An air conditioned room with his family. This he thought was the right decision. I fear I've made for a perfect vacation. Maybe I'll figure out this whole thing, whole surfing thing tomorrow. Deal with La, Cad La Canadines. La Canadines. The, the, the Canadia. Uh, now a Canadian state utilities company with uh, offshore capital and country. Used to be in European hands before the great slump provoked by the German madness of the 50s. We were to purchase this equipment and the sites we could further electrify the peninsula and deepen ties to the Canadian government. We were going to raise the issue with the Canadians at the next moment. Sounds like a good idea to me. No, uh, not terrible. Eh, that's getting worse. Good God. It's slowly, slightly getting better. But will it get better in time? Because we just have so much debt. Uh, being a piece, I don't think it would help either, would it? I don't think it would really help either. I know budget's negative. Which is good, you know. Well, help pay off debt, so. I mean, this one only lowered by 15%, right? Yeah, so like 15% of 0.24 is like nothing. It wouldn't have any real effect, though it really honestly wouldn't hurt us. I'll do it anyway, screw it, why not? See, didn't even help us. This is piece nice. Oil crisis. We still get the same effect. It says it gets better, but it doesn't really seem like it. Trains. Uh, spend a little money, increase your farm doesn't look nice. Well, 50% chance of increase growth by 0.2%. 50% chance of increase by 0 0.4. 0.2. Attract Canadian investors, yes. 3.192. Well, we'll see, I guess. Happy September, everybody. <coughs> Next step. A very strong nation, united and ready to open up to the world. It would only make sense for us to apply to join the OFN, our friends across the Atlantic, and secure an alliance with them. Should they say yes, we'll stand as a vanguard in Europe. While well, the prospect of being the vanguard of an overseas alliance may sound unfavorable, most likely grants considerable influence in the OFN, helping some lower nations or detractors out in the state. A very is ready to join the OFN. All we need to do is send a request to the Americans. Hey, 3.4%. Nice. That's pretty good. That's actually really good. We could use a little more income, though. We can sovereignty, exemplary, sort of federal army, reduction, economic miracle. The Mausoleum of Pozo Moro. A 10th International Congress of Classical Archaeology, Iberian Archaeologist, Amarago Gorbea, accepted a report on the largest ever discovered pre Roman Iberian civilization discovered underneath a farm estate in Albacete. Uh, dozens of rectangular stone bricks, four lion statues, and relics depicting various spirits and deities were reconstructed in a 10 meter tall at mausoleum. The size, design, and ornateness of the tomb indicates that the man, or oh, once entombed, there was the mighty king of an Iberian kingdom. The king of Pozomoro, as he's now called, is a mysterious man living in the late 6th century BC. The king would likely have had contact with some of the first Greek traders to come to Iberia's shores. The new trade routes bringing him and his kingdom great wealth. The artistic depiction of the gods covering his tomb are heavily evocative, evocative of Phoenician and Neo Hittite influence. Unfortunately, he died around 500 BC, more, mere decades before writing was brought to Iberia, and no remains of his body could be found at the ex excavation site. As such, neither the size nor name of his kingdom, nor his identity, accomplishments, or lifestyle can be determined. Nonetheless, the discovery of the mausoleum has stirred great excitement within the archaeological community, being both one of the oldest and one of the largest artifacts left by the poorly understood ancient Iberian peoples. Perhaps one day we'll truly know who this Bozomoro truly was. Canada source uh, La Canadine's assets. Yay! Our ingenious tactic of pushing La Canadine's acquisition proposal onto the overworked Canadian delegation at the end of long discussions, especially considering the summit. Well, so in Catalonia seems to have wholly worked out in our favor. Another piece of foreign owned capital in our nation is back in our capable hands, ready to be used for the, goods, uh, for the good of the Iberian people. Now the property of the already rich Canadian government. 
We now have the means to further invest in the air and expand existing structures and machinery to make the best use of the opportunity of harvesting more energy for our bustling and electricity hungry, pe hungry population. Using the company's existing knowledge in the field, it could also help us to better understand hydroelectric power generation and help improve uh, and innovate in this field. This is a leap in the right direction, a leap of progress. Thank you. Ah, oh, look at all that debt reduction. Oh, that actually helped us surplus a little bit. Ah, oh, you know, it's better than nothing. I'll take whatever we can. But, legalizing their languages. The banning of the Basque and Catalan languages was far more than just an act of petty collective punishment on Franco's part. He sought to totally erase their distinct cultures after they dared to defy the nationalists. Restoring the right to these people would to speak their language is no act of revolution, but a mere return to that most time honored of Iberian traditions diversity. This injustice must be dealt with, uh, probably now. As we get to the next step, too. I love the screen too much. I always look at this one. Did I? Yeah, we already maxed out the growth, which sucks. That's slowly going down. Slowly. This economy's barely, you know, increasing. But what is the next step, my friends? Hey, grant us full membership in the OFN. Thank you, Phyllis Schleife. On the great final day of the diplomatic mission that the Iberian delegation was sent to the U.S., delegates from the different OFN nations and their hopeful European diplomats gathered at the International Hotel in D.C. The luxurious limousines arriving in much the same torrential run that had greeted the Iberians a few days earlier. The atmosphere upon entering the conference room was rather jovial. The room littered with small groups of dignitaries hunching in different corners in deep conversation, raucous laughter reaching even outside, making the regular guests chuckle. Upon the last official entering and the stewardess or stewards closing the door, the mood became more professional, the Americans quickly making the official often stance regarding the Iberians' request. An audible sigh of relief was heard from the Europeans as the discussion then shifted onto the minutia regarding the Iberians' rights and duties as a fully fledged OFN member. The U.S. agreement led to the possibility of a significant turning point in history as Iberia joins the alliance for nations and further distances from fascist Europe. Fantastic! <coughs> Annual GDP growth factor? Oh my god, that could be so helpful. So what is growth factor? Independent member. Boost, growth boost. Nice. New status of autonomy. Our statutes. <coughs> the old statutes of autonomy were shockingly easy for Franco to or sin. The merchant or resistance from the government remnants of the time, most likely out of the spite of the perceived failure of the Basques and Catalans to halt the nationalists. Though we cannot say for certain that there will never be division within Iberia again, we can take steps to soothe wood wounds of both old and new. Not only will the statutes of autonomy be reestablished, but we will also enshrine them in the Constitution, henceforth. Regional autonomy will be no longer as a matter up for, for debate. And for civility, sure, why not? Happy November. Wow! Okay, now I heard it even more. But wow! That's not bad. Growth is, uh, the yearly plus is not that much better, but that's definitely better growth. And that's, that worked out slightly better for us, too. It's not enough, but still, whatever. And, look at that! Oh man, I forgot that the, the Italians joined the Japanese for this is we what the heck is wrong with this world? So there's the oh a fan, oh a fan, Japanese faction, Japanese faction all over Europe. That is disgusting. That is oh my gosh. But well, the OFN has us now. This is a weird world now. And the OFN one down here too. What the barnacles what happened to this world? Of course it would happen when we play as Iberia. But still, like then the Italians or no, that's the United Arab States. The Japanese own the Iraq because they're part of the Italian sphere, but like... But then Iran is now part of the Anites Pact, which is... What happened, Speer? Reformed National Socialists. Yeah, they must finish Focus Street. Oh, or it glitched out or something. Oh no, they're still fighting over there. Maybe? No. Are they? Did they... They lost. Okay, I think it's glitched. Legalizing minority languages. Francisco Canero said of the speech, watching the crowd from the back of the stage, he saw, or sat with a few of his aides, and none of them spoke. They were all sitting similarly, most except for the one speaking. This uh, native was a native Basque. One of those who fought for this language during the diarch, capable of speaking his home tongue far better than anyone else could muster. That was good, since someone else getting, getting someone else to do it could come off poorly. <coughs> the Basque spoke of things that were popular, Canero knew, because he had written the speech for just this occasion. He watched Bass speak of freedom, liberty, the right to exist as Bass, now as Spanish. Canero inhaled on the democratic pause, held his breath, and exhaled as he moved to the freedom of language. When the crowd cheered after the fact, it took hard that maybe, just maybe, the whole dark could be a bad chapter of history. I could tell you caused this, screamed a military official who had coincidentally been present for the speech. He went to speak more, but Canero quickly stepped into his car. Sorry, I let the chit chat, but I'd like to attend for, the, to bus for further business. Opposition drove off with the final comment, and hopefully that opponent will not create a larger conflict later. 
the Algerian unrest. The peasantry and landowners are two of the few demogra demographics not severely impacted by autarky, as the vast majority of the crops yields were purchased by the state itself or by food companies operating under state supervision rather than being exported. The end of autarky. Ah, oh, I was just asking what it was happening. Okay. Um, uh, rather than being exported, the end of autarky is uh, many of them worried about foreign competition, and some peasant communities have already downed tools and protests of our uh, promises to make the agricultural sector more competitive. Unlike your compatriots in the PRD hour, we will be careful not to let the free market get out of hand. Reassurances must be doled out and to inform the Algerian populace. Oh, look at that. Uh, of our good intentions before we find ourselves facing widespread protest action and subsequent food shortages. Shapiro, what have you done? Oh, he got the bad ending. He's reactionary now. At least that looks better. And that's actually connected all the way down. That's, so that makes him very strong. Oh, they got the bad ending. Reactionary ending, huh? It's funny. Oh, spare. Spare, spare, spare. What's number two? Hey, not bad, eh? Not bad overall. <coughs> Excuse me. The beginning of our ascent. Oh, hopefully. Because we want to make sure we do a fantastic call. How much content does Iberia really have? I like it. Ah, this tea is still pretty tasty. Lost in the Christmas market. Lights shining all around uh, little Icar. Adults' legs block her line of sight, and she cannot see a familiar face. People are laughing and talking. Commotion swirled around. Who knew why people were so happy to there? Why there's so many people? It's exciting! Ikisiar runs on her stubby legs, aimlessly exploring a crowd she lacks the faculties to fully understand. To her joy, Ikar spots spot chocolate on the ground. Why would someone just leave that lying around? No matter, this is now her chocolate. What an amazing day. It's the first year that Molina thought her daughter was old enough to go to the Plaza Mayor uh, Christmas market. She had only reached for her purse for a moment to buy herself some Tehran when her daughter vanished. Ikar, Ikar, where are you? There were no so many people here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hundreds if not thousands of attendees. Ikar, she screamed in desperation. Did you lose someone? Asked a middle-aged woman in whom Molina did not recognize, who had her own child in tow. My daughter, she's 80 centimeters tall, light brown, light hair with girl's eye. Don't worry, my son used to run up like this all the time when he was younger. I'll help you find her. What's your daughter's name? Ikar, which I know I'm saying wrong. Thank you so much. Chocolate begins melting her hand. She goes excitedly for a bite. A big black dog, twice the size, approaches, sniffling excitedly and licking her face. Tito, no looking, said the dog's owner. Jolting his collar back, the child, startled child began to cry loudly. Her mother froze, hearing the faint but familiar sound among the chaos. Shoving through the bewildered patron, she found her daughter and lifted her over her shoulder. Hugging her tightly, Ikara, I'm so glad you're safe. The middle-aged woman smiled at Molina. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, and Merry Christmas to you all watching as well. Restoring the statues of autonomy. Uh, Torquato, Torquato Fernandez Miranda presided over the Iberian Council. He called the model a symbol for what he later revealed was a constitutional convention. They were to propose, review, and then vote on the new provisions of the Constitution. Fernandez Miranda proposed the First Amendment to the meeting, a restoration of the old autonomy provisions for the minority areas of Iberia. The sort of statutes required a review, and the coalition passed the amendment with a clear majority. And only the time it would take to implement the law, the minority regions would be allowed to exist. Everything unwanted will shut down in a moment. It's in a meeting uh, that ultimately would just accomplish statutes of autonomy. How, now, how will we sell us to the bunker? Me with Accentia. Accentia are quite rightly a force to be wary of. They're a long record of successful prosecutions and tell us so. I'll be about these uh, blows. Grizzly scored ahead. On zeal. Uh, and pursuing anyone deemed a threat to national security is both commendable and rather concerning, however. They're clearly professionals at heart and uh, rather less politicized than we initially feared. We think that's the case anyway. They haven't arrested us for winning the election yet at any rate. There may be some m mutual misunderstandings that remain, so our new cabinet should meet with their leadership so as soon as possible to smooth things over. Not bad. Whoa! Oh my good lord! What happened here? 7.7% growth now? Why is it so... Oh, is it... Is it the OFN boost finally kicking in or something? Bruh. Surplus sucks, but... The debt to GP ratio should really go up if it's almost roughly 8% here. Holy crap. <coughs> oh, no, it's the oil crisis. Okay, that makes more sense. My bad. We just had that, and I didn't realize it. So the oil crisis effects are done. Okay. Well, it took us to 1974 to get rid of them. Nice. Very, very nice. Oh, the accents, yeah. Look, find what we're looking for. When we set out to fulfill our promise of restoring regional autonomy, our critics demanded to know exactly what we hope to accomplish by turning back the clock on centralization. 
Many pointed out that regional unrest, mostly prominent in Catalonia, was the leading cause of the coup that triggered the civil war. Most admit that they were not entirely without fault. The party was, indeed, divided over what fulfilling the promises meant. Now, however, we believe that we have found the answer that was demanded. A new vision of autonomy, where the constituent nations of Iberia act as faithful confederates with the assurances that their ancient rights will not be traveled upon by government overreach and paranoia. Dealing with the Gearian unrest. The farmers who pop Wow, look at 100%. Well, the farmers who populate much of the rural areas of Iberia may be in some regards blessed. Regardless of the ideal lifestyle by the Franquists, the farmers of the country were often pandered to, even during an autarky, the effects of which were lessened by their self sufficient nature. The farmers were pampered and had little reason to support other groups. Let's continue to today where they see our secure opposition voting bloc. Farmers do not support us, and perhaps not entirely unwarranted, we are perceived as an elitist group. The dreadful sword which exclusively supports urban areas, as opposed to the dreadful sword that pandered to the rural world before us. As painful as it is to admit, we are in many ways overly favoring our voting bloc, the urban areas. Even though the way to fix this is fairly obvious, the parties split between three opposing factions of this matter, each supporting a different resolution. The first and second groups both wish to effectively buy over the farmers using benefits dedicated to them, though they diverge in what benefits specifically given or to give. The first wish is to use farm equipment, increasing the effectiveness of the farmers and intending to use that favor to acquire supporters. The second wish is to use less direct means, using subsidies to show that we've not forgotten them. The third and final faction does not want to do anything. They argue that farmers were a lost cause and attempts to buy them would be pointless waste, which would be able to lead the leadership favor. Clearly caused by outdated equipment. Subsidize the crops more to give them relief. They didn't vote for us, did they? Oh, I kind of want to go with this one. I mean, that makes most sense for at least for societal development. Meeting with the Accentia anti separatista. There's absolutely no justification for the Accentia anti separatista, the dude child of Franco's obsession uh, with unity and the resources it, 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 to enact it. The agency best exemplifies the evils of the Caudillos. Created with an overwhelming sense of authoritarianism. The Accentia has been used not only to stop separatism, but actively or, and effectively act as a paramilitary force in some cases. Uh, creating some of the worst incidents to come to Iberia. There's no reason to create an enemy out of them, as horrible as working with them it is. It's a necessary evil until the time comes where they may be defamed. Francisco Baselmo will be sent to meet with the higher echelons of Accentia. His diplomatic skill hopefully will provide a valuable asset in the coming meetings. If he is able to convince Accentia heads that the country is safe in her hands, they may find them far less obstructive to our aims. Let us hope this things will calm down. The beginning of our ascent. Just like a gentle spring from on... Uh, from on high, peace and justice now hold Iberian in their warmth. Soothing embrace, wrongs have been righted, justice dispensed, and grievances addressed. Where once the streets were quiet and ordered, the jackboots of the over-militarized police kick clucking on the cobblestones. They are now filled with life. Businesses, homes, and churches alike have become halls of hope and happiness. Even the halls of government peel with laughter at times, as a sense of optimism unrivaled in our nation's history sets in. Above all else, there is the sense that no matter what comes, Iberian people will find a way to endure. No fascist, terrorist, or a mad dictator will halt their descent to heights yet undreamed of. For free Iberia, and better tomorrow. In the words. <laughs> Would you like a cigarette? Balsamo asks. Someone seems to have left a pack here. We did mention that someone had left it intentionally, of course. The man about uh, Balsamo's age regarded the pack for a moment, and then shrugged his shoulders. So of course, you have a slider. A lighter. He ascended a lighter and a cigarette and took a few moments to cheer a puff. Then he began to speak again. Now let us begin a meeting. I'm sure you can understand me through a smoke. Well, the man proved to be an eloquent speaker in the dance of words between two men who made the act, in, the act and art was a sight to behold. The man spoke for out for about an hour, around which the meeting concluded in both went their separate ways. He was sold, pleased with our moderation. The official was more than willing to put in good work in the Accentia, but they greatly appreciated a commitment to ensuring the state evolved at a controlled pace. It's a great surprise. They surely know our end goal with them, but it wasn't a matter to complain about. Friendship is a beautiful thing, when it works. Eight and a half percent. God dang! Should have joined the offense as soon as we could. Or we could just get rid of the debt and just print off as much money as possible. Greatly inflating an economy, but also allowing us to just... Uh, to dodge potentially dangerous deficits through giving us extra funds. Well, deficit spending, but what happens if we hit the max for debt to GDP ratio? Due to the great risks of money printing, it's only enabled when we have a deficit, which is usually, almost always. God dang, that's looking a little better too. Nice. Well, it looks like the economy is slowly coming back again for like the 17th time, but you know, we're playing as Iberia, a nation full of <coughs> struggle. My god, is there a lot of struggle with this nation, too. Modern military infrastructure would be nice, but, I mean, even if we did that, military spending factor means, like, nothing at this point. A uh, colorful cross promotion on the screen. A woman in a yellow dress sits across a small table for a man wearing a black suit. They look beautiful together, all the more like lifelike in the full color of Luis's new television. A waiter asks, man, would you like any wine, senor? I actually think we both like some cola. And which brand of cola would you like? We have La Cerza and La Brisa. The woman and the man shout their answers at the same time, but it seems that they don't agree on which sort is best. The man turns to his date and asks, Really? You prefer a brisa? Of course, brisa has a sweet taste, you just can't beat. What? La Cesera? La Cesera has the best color for sure. Now, brisa is, uh, brisa is lemonade, that's good stuff. 
But La Sierra's eliminated, so we'll run in refresh and the two giggle at each other, amused by the opposing or opposite preferences. The man smiles and says, so, uh, tell you what, waiter, ah, uh, la Cesera, cola, and uh, uh, brisa, brisa lemonade. And my wife will have uh, brisa cola and la Cesera lemonade. Some music plays with a couple moves in for a kiss, and the transition scenes, a uh, scene transitions to a reel showing glass bottles and pouring drinks as well as a phone number across the middle of the screen. Luis got it from his couch, looking for a notepad he could write the number down on. He found the notepad as the narrator spoke on the TV, your moments together are special and our taste too. That's why... Sazera and Brisa are giving out free samples packs to anyone who asks. Just call the number on your screen and we'll get a box with two, with two bottles of La Cesera Cola, two bottles of La Cesera Lemonade, two bottles of Brisa Cola, and another two bottles of Brisa Lemonade. And remember, it's completely free. Luis finished writing down the phone number. Shame that the free boxes don't have Brisa sparkling water in them. Actually, now that I think about it, the sparkling water is better. Uh, I'll go with Brisa. It doesn't really matter too much. <coughs> so that's one, two, three, four, Five in total, but one, two, three, six percent, six percent. Oh, six percent plus point three, point three, point three, point six, point eight, two point four, two point two four, eight point four. <coughs> After two point four, uh, oh no, it's not two point four. It's just because this increases. Oh, yeah, we just get increased foreign income. Okay, so maybe it doesn't increase our growth then. Okay, well, at least it increases investment costs, increase our uh, liquid reserves. So I, I read that wrong. 2% for each one would be insane. I think. Regardless, probably get almost 9%, my god. But oh well. It'd probably be better to not cut down on taxes, or, 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 or I mean, raise taxes right now. But we, we have to lower this. Even though, it may, I guess it would make more sense to increase GDP, but like still. Cut this down, raise this up a little bit, or maybe raise this up even more and just barely have any of this. Yeah, that's probably the other way to do it, but whatever. So what's next for Iberia? A billion in growth. Iberian economic uh, miracle. It's good. Med Minnesota Technology Exchange Program. City Union Exemplary. Iberian Council. Just really federal army. We never got rid of that, too. Um... Because usually at the end of every campaign, they'll say, hey, we're done. <coughs> so, uh, we might be done here. It's June 1974. And that might be the last focus for us. I hope not. Because I actually really like this focus tree a lot. Not bad, hey, not bad. Not bad. Even if we did this, we still have a deficit. So that's not good. Actually, we did that. Yeah, almost nine, almost roughly 10% growth, but I'm gonna assume that's probably gonna be the end of this campaign. My god, this campaign lasts so long, like the last one I did for uh, the Iberian U Federation and Iberian Union, but definitely did it about this time. But oh, never mind, the death of Franco. The old man lay motionless on the bed. His skin was pale, head adorned with only a few wisps of the hair that refused to fall out, clinging onto life only by the tubes through his nose and throat. Carmen embraced for the inevitable death of her husband. Her daughter, also named Carmen, embraced for the inevitable death of her father. A few minutes after midnight, Francisco Franco of Bahoman was taken off last support at the request of his family members, the general overthrew the Spanish Republic. The authoritarian reformer, Caldullo of the Iberian Union, not since Philip II's reign three centuries ago has Iberia seen any one man do so much to transform the politics, the economy, and society of the Iberian Peninsula, but in his final years, Franco's grip on power rapidly deteriorated. A long-time enemy of the democracy, he can resist the waves of reformism coming from both his advisors and the Iberian public. His three and a half decades of authoritarian rule came to an end, and so now he, so has he. To his supporters, he was a man who saved Spain from Bolshevism and Nazism, restored Spain to its Catholic roots, and created the Iberian Union. For those who opposed him, he was a monster responsible for the deaths of hundreds of thousands in the Civil War, a man who oppressed women, natives, and peoples, of political opponents, and regional minorities, to a truly important extent, a tyrant who kept Iberia in chains, regardless of his legacy. Today is a momentous day in a young nation's history. May we finally move past him. Is that it? <coughs> well, I'm going to assume that's it. Seeing as nothing else is really going on. So, hey, if you enjoyed the campaign like I did, please do consider leaving a like. It does help me out. Um, subscribe if you're new, which at this point you might, you might not. Uh, check out my Discord link in the description below. Uh, recommend some other nations from Antino that I've, I've yet to play, because I've played quite a few of these nations at TNO, but definitely not all of them. Very close to all of them, in different ways. Why is China this ugly color? Uh, regardless, but like I said, let me know in the comments below which nations you'd like to see me play again, and I guess I'll see you tomorrow in 
another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous, tremendous Iberian Federation rest of... Oh, your day. Oh, well, never mind. Oh, my bad. Oh, I guess we have one more then. Auto dictatorship into the future. Okay, this is it. Fine. I apologize for ending things early. Just, this took forever to get to. The second general election of the young Iberian democracy draws near. The nation is moving past this oil crisis. And the dream of a united Portugal and Spain is further solidified. No longer do people say that they simply live in Iberia. They say they're Iberians. The radical terrorism that defined the 60s fades as those dissatisfied with the government now have a place to voice their concerns. And the social ills that once plagued Iberia become ever smaller. Still, much remains to be done as we move towards a fairer, free, and more equal Iberian Union. We're first voted into office on the wave of enthusiasm. 31 years after the last flicker of Iberian democracy died, it now roars back to life. No longer can the ruling political party censor, suppress, or imprison as rivals. No longer do minorities lack a voice in government. No longer are schools but a tool to preach authoritarian and conservative dogma. Unfortunately, not all are enthusiastic about our work. The Union National now has been reduced to a mere husk of its former self, but many of its supporters still seek a return to authoritarianism, chauvinism, and moralism through the growing Alancia Popular. Meanwhile, those in the Partido Renovador Democratico are appalled by the extent of our secularization and by what they deem an insufficient amount of free market reforms, but our new constitution is an ironclad one. Built to guarantee that no matter who wins the election, the winner cannot undo our democracy and once again deny people the rights. Adelanta hacia el futuro. Va em franta para el futuro. I don't know which one is what. I don't speak Spanish, but something about the future. But there it goes. So I apologize for ending things early, but thank you to all who has worked on this nation. It's an amazing nation and just tons of fun. So like I said, enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.